Hello, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary, and today's video is going to be the finally fall book tag. I think people normally do this video in the end of September, the beginning of October. I'm doing it now because it's finally starting to actually feel like fall. We've got some changing leaves happening. Things are really, really exciting. Fall is my favorite time of year. I love Halloween. I love setting up and decorating for Christmas. I love that it's like brisk out, but not necessarily freezing freaking cold, which I'm sure it will get there sooner rather than later because I live in the Midwest and that is what it tends to do here. Just some housekeeping. This is a bookshelf. This is also a new bookshelf that I got for my birthday. And there's one more of these. These are the Billy bookcases from Ikea. And I think I actually got an Ikea gift card for my birthday also. So I'm gonna buy a third because I think it'll fit in this room. So eventually I will have a wall of shelves behind me. This is what we're working with right now. This doesn't have the shelves in because I still need to mount it to the wall and I don't want to risk it falling with stuff on it, obviously. So that's just some housekeeping to get this started out of the way. I don't know who came up with the finally fall book tag, but I will try to figure that out and link it down below. If I don't, just know that I did not come up with this book tag, which I'm sure you already know. So uh, without further ado, I am just gonna jump into the question. So the first question is, in fall the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. And for this, I actually picked The Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rasmore, which is a book that I read earlier this year. I absolutely loved it. It's a YA standalone fantasy, and it's based on Jewish mythology. So it's set in this small town in Eastern Europe somewhere. I can't remember exactly where, but I believe it is in the 1800s. So it's historical fantasy. And there's these two girls who are sisters, Lena and Lita. Is that their names? I can't remember now. I'm so sorry. Their mother is a Gentile. Their dad is Jewish. And so their parents match was not approved by their like grandparents. And so their parents both left their hometowns and moved to this other village. And because their mom is a convert to Judaism and not born like ethnically Jewish, their family has sort of always been like on the outskirts of the society because they live in like a primarily Jewish town. But also there are some people who are Christian there, but they like don't fit in with them because they're not Christian. So it's just like this, this um, odd man out type of thing. One day news that the patriarch of the dad's family in a different town is sick and their dad needs to step up. And so he and their mom decide to go back to dad's hometown and the girls are gonna stay in the house. But before they leave, both the parents tell the kids that they actually are shapeshifters. So the dad is bear shifter and the mom is like swan shifter. And one of the daughters is shifts into a swan and the other daughter shifts into a bear. And so it's about them like learning these things about themselves. Um, it's like just a really obvious, obvious metaphor for puberty and like your body changing and your life changing. And how like some things that used to bring us together can also tear us apart. And so that's what the book is about. There's also a little like love story between uh, the bear sister and this boy, David or David. I can't remember. I really liked it though. This was really, really fun read. And the atmosphere is so vivid. It's just, just this like, just wonderful, magical atmosphere to it, if that makes sense. So I really enjoyed that book. And I do think it's very atmospheric. Prompt two is nature is beautiful, but also dying. This always cracks me up. <laughs> the prompt is to name a book that is beautifully written, but deals with a heavy topic. And for this, I'm gonna talk about The Dutch House by Anne Patchett once again. Uh, this is a book about two siblings who just bad things keep happening to them. And they grew up in this like really magical Dutch house, but when they were re really little, their mom left and then their dad ends up remarrying and they get this like wicked stepsister or stepmother with like these evil stepsisters and eventually their dad dies. And so it's just these two siblings trying to like deal with the grief of losing their family and also losing their status because they're no longer wealthy like they once were because they get cut out of the will and everything. And then it's really about these siblings like having to be each other's number ones because they don't have anybody else. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I think it's so well written. The audiobook is read by Tom Hanks, who's one of my favorite people. So I love that. And I had a really good time with this one. Third prompt is fall is back to school season. So share a nonfiction that taught you something. And for this, I'm gonna talk about The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking by Katie Mack. And this is by an astrophysicist, Katie Mack, Dr. Katie Mack. <laughs> and she is basically explaining how scientists believe the world will end for dummies. And it's like terrifying to read, but also something about like 
understanding the to the extent that I, I do understand uh, makes me feel better about myself. I don't know why, but it's so informative, really well written, but also like well written in a way that like, I haven't taken a science class. I haven't taken physics, first of all, since like junior year of high school, I think. So that was 11 years ago, okay? And I haven't taken a science class since my sophomore or junior year of, my sophomore year of college, I think is when I took the biology class I had to take to graduate. Anyways, all of that to say, if you don't have like a science background, this book is very informative and very easy to read. I obviously cannot tell you if it's like new information for people who do have a science background or like how you would interpret it. But uh, I really enjoyed that one. And I think if knowing about like really tragic, chaotic things helps you like self-soothe, I would recommend this one. Prompt four is in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with people you love. Name a fictional friend group or family that you would like to join. And this one was extremely easy for me. Um, I chose the Bridgertons from the Julia Quinn series and also the Netflix TV show. Specifically, the TV show Bridgertons are who I would like to join. And it's only like purely because I would love to be rich and go to balls all the time. And also like they're funny. So I just really like their family dynamic. I like the way they all like support each other. And also I like, I would like to be affluent. So <laughs> prompt five is the leaves are piling up on the ground. So show us a stack of colorful spines. So this is my colorful book stack. We've got Lessons for Chemistry, Still Lives, Sweet Tooth by Ian McEwan, The Invisible Life, no, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, uh, Cutting for Stone, Washington Black and Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout. And all of these are books that I have not read before, except for The Invisible Life, no. So the bottom two I've read, and I've read this one, The Immortal Life. I keep wanting to call it The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but I know that's wrong. Uh, but the other four books I have not read yet. So this is my fall book spine. Prompt six is to share a book that has um, a storytelling element or someone who's telling a story because it says that fall is the perfect time to curl up by the fire and share stories. And for this, I actually chose The English Patient by Michael Ondaatje, which I read last year, I think. It was one of my favorite books of the year last year. This is about four people who, it's it, like post-World War II in the small town in Italy, and they're all like forced to stay at a villa. And we have a young woman who is a nurse who is pretty much stuck there because like she's like emotionally stuck because her dad died and she like feels like there's nothing to return home for. And then we have this guy who is Indian, but he was conscripted to fight for Britain in this war. And he is a bomb diffuser. So we have him. We also have this man who is a thief who actually knew the woman who's a nurse. He was a friend of her father's. So he found out she was staying at this villa and he basically came to find her to try to help her move on and leave. And the other reason she is still at the villa is because there's this guy called the English patient who there's lots of like guessing about who he actually is and trying to get him to tell the story. So he's the one who's telling his life story to them. That's the storytelling element of this. But like there's different, like whether or not they can trust him or whether or not they like him. Um, and she kind of, she's not like in love with him but she has like made it her mission to take care of him. The reason he can't leave, he can't be moved. He is like a, he's a burn victim. So I think it was a plane crash and he was in a plane crash and has burns like all over his body. And so he's just like basically dying, but she is a nurse. So she's caring for him until he passes. And I love this book. It made me so emotional. Um, the characters are so vivid and I just really loved the story. I loved the like imperfections in all of the characters, if that makes sense. It's not necessarily like gray morality, but it is like everyone is very clearly flawed and nobody is perfect and nobody is exactly as they appear when you first meet them. And also the only thing you know about any of the characters is what they tell you about themselves. So there's a little bit of the like unreliable narratorness to it in that way, but I love that book. I highly recommend it. It was really good. The next prompt is the nights are getting darker, Sherry dark slash creepy read. And for this, I actually went with a book that I read two years ago now, I think. 
and that is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is another historical fantasy. It's set in like puritanical New England. It's like a fictional version of that so it's not actually in our world but it's a town called Bethel and uh, we follow this girl Emmanuel I think is her name and her mother I think was accused of being a witch and Emmanuel also has these like witchy abilities. They're really creepy like devils and demons in the woods. Um, there's also like a lot of I guess political intrigue in the sense that like the guy who's in charge of their village has multiple wives and it's like you have to like really tiptoe around him and the religious faction I guess and what am I trying to say? The political intrigue also comes in there's like social intrigue I guess because like there's like social classes and uh different people of different races are like racism exists in this book but Emmanuel I think is mixed and that's like part of the problem that she has with fitting in because she doesn't really fit in either community um it's super good I loved it it was originally supposed to be part of a series it still says that it's part of a series on Goodreads however I have heard rumors that Alexis Henderson is no longer continuing it as a series which is fine because I would have to reread it to pick up a sequel but I love that book if you haven't read it yet it does get pretty dark and twisty and I do know that it has very mixed reviews but it's one of those fantasy styles that really worked for me personally so if we have similar tastes I think you would like it prompt eight is the days are getting shorter share a short heartwarming read and I actually just reread this but I want to recommend to you the story of your life by Ted Chang which is part of a short story collection it's what the movie Arrival is based on and it's a short story about a woman named Dr. Louise Banks who is a linguist and she is approached by the U.S. military because aliens have come to earth and they want her to learn the aliens language without teaching them English so that she can interpret for a scientist who wants to be able to ask her ask the aliens questions about their technology if that makes sense so that's like the basic setup and it plays with time in a really interesting way it's got a lot of vignettes in it about like the rest of Dr. Banks's life um like her child and uh her marriage and how her marriage falls apart and how you know just different things that happen in her life and it like intersperses that with this one through line of her learning the language of these alien species this alien species these aliens whatever uh it's so good and the movie arrival is incredible too it's a 2016 movie i know it was nominated for an oscar it actually might have just been amy adams who was nominated for the oscar for that but i love this movie it's fantastic prompt nine is fall returns every year name a book that you are wanting to return to for this I said Ninth House by Lee Bardugo which is a book that I've been meaning to reread for two or three months now and I just really need to get to it but I think I mentioned this before my best friend from college actually read it over the summer and she wants to reread it and then read Hellbent which is why I'm rereading it because I want to read the sequel and it's been years and I never did it so it's it's time uh but I think we're gonna try to plan like an unofficial buddy read type thing uh to read it around the same time so we can discuss so that is the plan for Ninth House I do want to read it at some point I don't know when I'm gonna get to it uh the other book that I would say is a favorite that I want to reread soon or rather than later I would really like to reread East of Eden by John Steinbeck I read this book in 2020 maybe and I remember thinking that towards the end it felt like it was dragging but it's a very cyclical story it's about a family it's about how families like repeat the same scars um so the original guy is Adam and he has a twin brother and he and his twin brother don't get along and then Adam ends up meeting and falling in love with this woman Kathy and they get married but she sort of latches onto him to get away from things that have happened in her past and it's clear that she doesn't ever really love him but she has a really complicated like relationship to the world around her I also think it's interesting to look at Kathy with the view of like a person who has very little choice in her life because like women at this time didn't really have a ton of choices in general and like she couldn't own property by herself she couldn't have a, she didn't have a bank account like there's all these things that like she was so limited in and she needed Adam for um and then it follows their journey they move out to California they run a farm they end up having twin boys Kathy leaves and it's about like just the cyclical nature of things repeating themselves um but it's one of my favorite 
classics and I'm really excited to reread it. I feel like this is the perfect time of year to reread that. Um, it, for me, fall is definitely a good time to like cozy up with a longer book, especially winter. Uh, that's something that I love. So, um, and that is going to wrap up the book recommendations portion of this. And now the last one is fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. Some of you may know this. I am an audiobook listener. That's how I get the majority of my reading done. I love an audiobook. I also work in an office and the office has paper thin walls and I have an office neighbor who is loud AF. So these are dual purpose for me, but I have these headphones. They are noise canceling. They are by Sony, I believe. Yes, Sony. And I got the blue ones because they were half off for some reason. And I've had them for several months now. I love them. They're amazing. They're over the ear. Whoop. They're comfy and they really do block out all the noise. They have the like thing that you can turn it on and off. Um, I always have it on. So sometimes I just wear them with the noise canceling on when <laughs> my noisy office mate is in a Zoom meeting or a deposition or something. Uh, sometimes I will listen to music while I'm at work. Sometimes I, and when I'm at home, I listen to my audiobooks on these and they're perfect and I love them. And they, the charge lasts a remarkably long time. Like I, probably charge them once every other week and I use them some days like a full eight hours and the charge doesn't really change that much so they really are like a great great headphones I think the other cozy thing that I like to have when I read sorry I got these slippers I believe off Amazon uh they're fuzzy and they are soft and they are perfect and my husband and I decided to get house shoes because we want to be people that don't wear outside shoes in our house. We're not perfect about it, to be honest. But these are my house shoes. I wear them in the house exclusively and constantly. So I love them for snuggling up and reading. They're like not uncomfortable to wear. Like, like if I'm laying down on the couch, I can still wear them and not feel like super uncomfortable. Whereas other shoes, I would not feel comfortable doing that in. Hope that makes sense. But that's it. This is the finally fall book tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below how you would answer these prompts. Also, let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about in this video and how you felt about them. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!